Welcome back to the OWASP AppSec tutorial series. My name is Jerry Hoff, and this is episode number two, Injection Attacks. This tutorial series is for web developers who want to write more secure code. And learning about injection attacks is a great place to start. So in the next 10 minutes, we're gonna go through a common type of injection attack known as SQL injection. We'll then take a look at some other types of injection attacks. I'll show you some common fixes. And towards the end of the video, I'll point you to some useful articles and source code where you can learn more. So let's get started. First of all, injection attacks are a very serious problem. To give you some idea, every few years, the OWASP Foundation puts out a list of the top security risks for enterprise web applications, known as the OWASP Top 10. The list reflects the collective judgment of many, many security professionals in the industry. And right now, the top risk to web applications, in their opinion, is injection. So this is definitely something every web architect, developer, and tester needs to be very familiar with. And what makes it so dangerous is that it's easy to exploit, it's pretty common in web applications, and the impact can be quite, quite severe. So to make sure that we all have the same idea of what an injection attack is, let's do a quick example of the kind of injection attack you're most likely to see, SQL injection. So let's imagine an application that contains a simple form asking for user data. And to keep things simple, we're just gonna focus on this one field, the name field. Now, as developers, we're normally told how the application should work, and then we create it. So we imagine the user will fill out the form and then hit submit, where the data will leave the user's machine, it will be sent across the internet, where it will wind up entering our web application. Now, most web developers make heavy use of databases to store and retrieve data. And to talk to the database, we use a language called SQL. So very often, the data that was entered by our users winds up as part of these SQL statements. You can see the developers here joining a fragment of the SQL statement together with the user supplied data to make a complete command. This command is sent to the database where the database interprets and runs the command. So this is where the problems start. The application does work, but the way that the code was written is definitely not secure. So let's look at the same application, but this time let's see what happens when we add a little extra something to the user data. Like last time, I'll enter my name, but this time I'll put a little SQL at the end. I'll hit submit and send the request across the internet to the target web application. Like before, the user supplied data is joined together with the SQL. But this time, the bit of SQL I added to the end of my name actually alters the intended purpose of the SQL statement. The quotes line up perfectly to make a valid SQL statement. But now, this time, instead of just selecting the records for one name, it pulls down all the records, which is exactly how attackers pull off attacks like this. For example, in a recent case, attackers stole close to 200,000 unencrypted user passwords and 500,000 user emails from a very popular tech website. And in another attack, due to SQL injection, 30 million customer records were stolen from a popular online dating website. As you can see, SQL injection is a huge risk, where a single code flaw leads to massive data loss. It can even result in the attackers taking over your entire database server. For more information, you can check out the OWASP presentation called Advanced SQL Injection to Operating System Full Control by Bernardo Domele. To make matters even worse, it's not just databases. Any interpreter used by your web application can potentially have this problem. So what are the interpreters commonly used by web applications? Well, obviously databases. And for authentication, very frequently you'll have LDAP servers, plus an array of XML-based technologies like XSLT, XPath, and other XML messaging formats. In addition, most web applications keep log files, which are not interpreted, but attackers can actually inject into them new lines so that they can add fake log entries. 
And in some cases, we have web applications that call shell scripts on the server, where if you're not careful, you can wind up submitting user supplied data directly to the command line, essentially giving attackers shell access to your web server. Definitely not a good thing. And of course, nearly every web browser has a JavaScript interpreter. This type of injection is so common, we have a special name for it, cross-site scripting, AKA XSS, which is the topic of the next episode. So now that we know this is a serious problem, how do we defend ourselves? Let's deal with SQL injection first. First of all, please be aware that you cannot rely on JavaScript validation or by sending data via the POST method. Both of these techniques can be trivially circumvented using a web proxy, which I will demonstrate in an upcoming episode. If you are constructing SQL statements in your web application, make sure that you're using parameterized queries. Parameterized queries are not vulnerable to SQL injection attacks. So if you're dynamically creating SQL statements within your web application, normally this is your best bet. So let's take a quick look at some code. This first example is in Java. So in this Java code, we put a question mark placeholder in the SQL statement where we want the user data to go. Now, instead of the statement, we're using the prepared statement, which allows us to safely replace the question mark with the user data. Now let's move on to .NET. .NET is almost the same thing. We put a token in the SQL statement where we want to safely insert user data. We then instantiate the parameter instance and tell it the token name and value. Then we add the parameter to the command. Now another solution is to not construct dynamic SQL statements in the code and instead use stored procedures. There are a few security best practices you'll need to follow when constructing and calling the procedures, which we won't cover here, but I'll point you to some resources on the web for learning more about that. So those are your best bets for SQL injection. But what about the other interpreters that we discussed, like XML, the command line, LDAP, and, and some of the others? Well, in those cases, those interpreters do not support parameterized expressions. So you're going to have to encode the user data before you concatenate it together to make a command. Now, each interpreter is going to require a specific encoder, but I'm gonna show you on the web where you can download a whole set of encoders that can help you defend yourself against these types of injection attacks. There is actually quite a bit more about injection attacks that you'll wanna know about this video, however, is just giving you a brief introduction, just the tip of the iceberg. But hopefully now you have an idea of what injections are and a few of the defenses that you can use to defend yourself. But you need to find out more to really build secure code. So let's turn to the OWASP website, which is full of articles that you ought to read in order to give yourself a more complete understanding of injection attacks. Definitely read the SQL Injection Prevention Cheat Sheet, which will give you more information about prepared statements, stored procedures, and escaping data. Then check out the articles on XPath Injection, Log Injection, and Command Injection. Then the last thing I wanna show you is where you can get those encoders that I spoke about before. For good reference examples on encoders, find the OWASP Enterprise Security API, also known as eSAPI. eSAPI is free and open source, and I encourage you to take a look at the source code and check out the encoders, which you can use to properly encode untrusted data and defend yourself against the attacks we've discussed. So that's it for this episode of the OWASP AppSec tutorial series. I hope I've given you a bit more insight on injection attacks links to all the articles and resources mentioned in this episode can be found at freecbt.com. Special thank you to all those who gave feedback for the show. Be sure to follow our YouTube channel and get notified when new episodes become available. This is Jerry Hoff signing out, and I look forward to talking with you next time.